everyone. This is Black Kids in Outer Space. We're sorry we had a slight technical issue, but you know that's okay. We just keep pushing through because we're in outer space. Um, today, I'm really, really, really happy, excited because I have Brooklyn in the house. Um, yeah. I have a, a native. Um, her name is Quayley Campbell. Um, Campbell is a consultant to government agencies with over 20 years of expertise in policy, procedure development, and specializing in integration of new computer systems. But we're here to talk about Quayley and her bike share advocacy work. Um, she's a bike share advocate um, who promotes cycling as a viable mode of transportation, especially to communities of color. For the past three years in collaboration with Better Bike, Partnership, Quayley has served as a bike share ambassador and has led many rides in Bed-Stuy, Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. These rides introduce new riders to the New York City bike share program and to cycling in general. Quayley formed a group for new cyclists called Brooklyn Cyclists of Color. And to date, there are over 23 active members who share their cycling tips, experiences, rides, routes, fears, and challenges. Um, you, are, you live in, in Clinton Hill, correct? Correct, correct. And you have Which two is sons. Amazing. I have two <laughs> sons, yes. Okay. So, you know, the thing is you kind of have a unique experience with bike share. You're not okay. not your experience is unique, but a lot of times the bike share is just about city bike. But I know that Best Day Restoration was very very like had a had a really kind of a, a starring role, like a leading role in getting um bed style walking and riding bikes and doing complete streets again. So can you give me a little bit of information about that? Absolutely. Um, so three years ago, um, I moved back to Brooklyn. I was living in um, Newark, New Jersey for about 10 years and I moved back to Brooklyn and um, I moved back with a vehicle and I soon learned that it was very hard to um, get around with this car and that the car stayed parked most of the time. And I still needed to do errands. I needed to, you know, um, go to a, you know, a central downtown business district. Um, and so taking a bus, taking a train wasn't always viable. And so um, the city bike stands were around and I became a member. Um, shortly after becoming a member, I was contacted um, by City Bike and bed -Stuy Restoration Corp about a project that they were starting where they wanted to, um, one, expand City Bike to Bedford-Stuyvesant, but they also, um, bed Restoration was receiving a grant by the um, Better Bike Share Partnership to increase um, cycling to community of color. Um, and so they were looking for ambassadors, basically, to kind of help to promote cycling, help to promote bike share and get people of color and people of the best eye, um, rest, best, best eye community um, cycling. Mm -hmm. um, and so I quickly joined um, that opportunity. And so we b began three years ago um, leading rides um, primarily during the bike season from um, March through October, um, and we ride around the different neighborhoods of Brooklyn, just, you know, um, showing people that, uh, you know, bike sharing and bike cycling um, is a viable mode of transportation. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and I to, how do people feel about, like, you know, when they see, because I've, I've seen your group, I've seen you on Facebook, and I know Dulcie, I know all the Brooklyn crew, and kind of people... Mm -hmm. And it's weird if people who are not from the African-American neighborhood or Caribbean community, they have this kind of assumption that, oh, black people don't ride bikes. Um, right. So how I mean, how's the community kind of taking your your kind of stuff, what you're doing in Brooklyn and also um, just kind of like the city bike thing? How are they how are they taking that? Are they viewing that as like, oh, she's from the neighborhood. So it's different. Or what's the response? Um it, that's a good question. There's been mixed reviews. Um, I've certainly seen over the years people warm up to City Bike. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, to be honest, um, that we had to, you know, tackle a huge discussion about um, City Bikes and, you know, its representation as part of gentrification. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's plenty of arguments that exist about um, the timing of city bikes appearing in um, neighborhoods um, mm -hmm. and appearing in our neighborhoods. Um, and so there's resistance to using city bike because of that. 
Um, and so we kind of have to demystify the program, demystify ownership of City Bike. A lot of times you see this blue bike with a City Bike logo and everybody thinks it's owned by City Bike and it's not. Um, there's a company called Motivate that owns the bike, City Bike Spons um, City Bike City Bank, sorry, sponsors mm -hmm. um, the bikes or the initial output of the bikes. Um, and so we had to kind of answer questions in that regard. People don't, you know, know about its cost. Um, there's this kiosk that's set up and, you know, it's not, I guess, user friendly for the average person. And so um, that's something that we've had to answer questions about how much does it cost. And when people people are actually surprised that um, how affordable um, it is. And when they compare that against a Metro card or, the, you know, the cost of one trip, which is um, at, at present, I believe it's 275, mm -hmm. um, one way to go somewhere on a train or bus. Um, and you can get a city bike membership, um, annual membership for about, I think now it's $167. Um, and there's a lot of, um, you know, if you live in housing, New York City housing, you can do it for $5 a month, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so there's opportunities in that regard for people, um, you know, of low income. So we've had to answer a lot of questions. We're seen actively in the community. People, you know, we're available to answer those questions. We're available to take people on rides to show them how it works and how easy it is to, you know, ride around the city, how easy it is to get from one neighborhood to another neighborhood. You have growing up, I remember I had friends who never left their community. They left, never left their neighborhood, you know, um, and now you can do that. You can access other neighborhood. And now Brooklyn being, you know, sort of like a Manhattan, you don't even have to go to Manhattan for entertainment. <laughs> Or, you know, work, work. You don't have to go to Manhattan for work. And you can really get around by just riding in some communities, by just riding city bikes. So we've really served as, you know, an example to answer any and all questions in regard to um, the bike share. And and right now, the bike share program is city bike, but that's expanding. We're soon going to welcome dockless bikes as that will be owned by other companies. So there's going to be even more um, opportunities to ride um, bikes in New York City and in Brooklyn, for sure. Well, I think that's one thing people should kind of know about. Like when it's, it's called, um, you know, it, I almost think the name is kind of unfortunate that it's called City Bike because people think, oh, it's some kind of bank coming to my neighborhood. And those are like exactly. City Bike, actually, like they're bike shares and they have, they just kind of have like a kind of a, that's that's kind of like a, you know, the, the person who's sponsoring it now may not be the person who's sponsoring it two years yeah, from now. Absolutely. And so exactly. you guys, um, I know Best Time Restoration, you guys do a bike share. So it's like whoever comes to the community, that has that wants to share their bikes. That's who you guys share exactly. your bikes with. So this right. kind of a best Die restoration bike share program with the Better Bikes Partnership. So Better Bike Share Partnership, I think, is a national organization, right? Uh -huh. That um that that supports bike sharing in communities, right? Yeah. And so with Better Bike Share Partnership actually um, awards grants to different organizations around the country. Mm -hmm. And Best Buy Restoration is a community-based organization that's located in Beth Bedford Stuyvesant. Um, it's you know been there for years. It's very well known. It's a, um, a institution. Um, that has its roots um, deep in the community, they were awarded a um, grant, okay, mm -hmm. um, to increase, you know, bike sharing and cycling um, in the Bedford-Stuyvesant community, which is a, a community of color, which is, you know, in some um, aspects of it, it's a low-income community. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that uh, grant, they partnered with City Bike, they partnered with Department of Health, they partnered with um, Department of Transportation, they partnered with um, politicians of, in the area, they also partnered with community residents such as myself and other people um, to, you know, have a strategic plan to roll out and um, support bike sharing and cycling in the Bedford-Stuyvesant and beyond communities. And I think that's one thing that's kind of challenging about Best Eye, um, the Best Eye community. I know in the past it was viewed as kind of like this neighborhood where the new black middle class kind of, of went to. This is like around the turn of the century. Um, yep. And you have a wide variety of people. Because that isn't um, um, Spike Lee from that kind of Brooklyn, that neighborhood. Yeah, he's from a, um, Brooklyn, a neighboring community. A neighboring yes. community. So you have kind of that going on. So you kind of have, there's two bed styles because 
you know, you have kind of the more economically oppressed community and you kind of have the, the more established black community there. Um, have you had challenges in regards to infrastructure? I know that certain things in regards to trying to get things done in regards to um, having streets. I know that Best Restoration did a really great job in regards to making a pedestrian plaza right in front of uh, yeah. Best Eye Restoration, but in regards to some of the streets that are a little bit hairy and challenging in regards to, you know, riding bicycles, how is that? I mean, is there kind of a, a young bed versus an older bed Being lovely. respectful, of course, being respectful. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, I think um, we're at the point now where we are looking at um, infrastructure Mm -hmm. um as it pertains to cycling um you have some communities it seems um where their biking infrastructure is growing um because of community input um and then you have some where um it needs to grow um certainly in bedford stuyvesant um there are um bicycle lanes um however there needs to be more um when you look at bicycle lanes, um, you know, you're looking across communities. And so currently, um, you know, in the neighborhood, the neighboring communities of Bedford-Stuyvesant, the bicycle lanes don't continue throughout Bedford-Stuyvesant, sort of ends um, at, you know, that border. Yeah. Um, and so there's questions about why that is, um, you know, and so those are sort of the questions that we're sort of tasked with, um, you know, asking the community board. And so our community board, um, you know, we're, we're, at, we're right at that process where we're trying to communicate with them and find out what can we do to um, make our infrastructure better. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's sort of a conversation to be continued. Um, and we're hoping that, you know, um, our community board and, and, and residents and the residents in the community that cycle and who, you know, need a better cycling infrastructure, um, come together and we kind of work things these things out. I mean, obviously, it's about um, persuading those who may not see cycling as a viable mode of transportation mm -hmm. um, that it is. Um, I think we're we're here. You know, you you if you three years ago when I started out, um, I could say I was probably riding down Fulton Street, which is a major. Um, you know, uh, a major um, street in Brooklyn. Um, and I didn't see a lot of cyclists. But today, I'm seeing a lot of cyclists. And I'm seeing cyclists of all ages, all colors. Um, we are we are represented. And so, you know, the question um, has changed. The, 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 you know, it's not about, you know, what if. It's about we're cycling and we need, um, we need the right pathways. We need the bicycling, um, the cycling infrastructure so that we can move and get from one place to another, just as if you would do for motorists um, um, as well. And, and I guess we, we, the thing is that we need it before, I mean, I guess that's, you kind of touched upon that before, where it's so frustrating, where it seems like our communities, when I say our, the black community seems to get, get um, the support that it needs after it becomes attractive to white developers. And so it's kind of like, wow, can't we get this stuff before? Um, yeah. it, it's yeah. like, why, you know, it, it kind of almost makes you feel like, is there is there not enough like white people there yet <laughs> before we can mm -hmm. actually like, you know, actually do mm -hmm. something? I don't. I, I hate using the term fix, but I want to use the term like we want to make it comfortable for people to 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 walk comfortable people to walk, to, to, to ride their bicycle. I mean, the thing is, I know that um, um, I and I even talked to you a little bit about this. I know that the, the uh, best I, Brooklyn has a lot of churches. We have a lot of seniors that are like walking. Complete streets could also help them in regards to, you know, walking to and from and not having to feel like they're trapped in their car, correct? Right. I mean, you know, I have the group that, you know, you referenced um, is a very intergenerational group. We have uh -huh. seniors. And we have seniors that are cycling, <laughs> you know, um, and so absolutely, I think nobody's, you know, um, 
um, just, you know, nobody's removed from this conversation of, of cycling. This is very much a, a mode of um, transportation. I think it just needs to be welcomed as such, and we need to provide for that. You know, oftentimes I try, when I have conversations with people about cycling and bike sharing, I try to remove the whole race part out of it and the gentrification part out of it because, to be honest, you know, we can sit here and we can debate on, you know, race and um, justification, but we were biking before, you know, we just never asked for what we need to get from place to place. You know what I mean? We just did it. We just, you know, biked wherever we wanted. But now we can, we have the, you know, we ask for um, the bicycle infrastructure. We can ask for the bike paths, you know. And so I think it's about us being at the table at the time when, you know, um, we can ask for these things and making sure that our community um, gets what it needs. to. And, and this is a vibe. Mode. This is a very cheap way. It's a very healthy way um, to get around. Um, there's so many be benefits to cycling that I don't see how it can be a negative, um, you know, to have. Well, I think I, I agree with you. And I think that that's the thing that's just to me so frustrating. This idea that that uh, that black people, that Latinx people, that we weren't riding our bikes, that we weren't asking for this infrastructure. We may not have had the language to ask for it, but we were asking for this stuff 10 years ago. We were asking for this stuff 15 years ago. I mean, I do um, I do like the book by Melody Hoffman, you know, Bike Lanes or White Lanes, but I feel that that very kind of oversimplifies, I'm not saying her book oversimplifies, but I'm saying this whole idea that, oh, that's something that white people do, or this is something that black people do. That's, I think that that's kind of like incorrect in regards to it. I think about, you know, I think about more like people, I'm trying to think, I have this one author that I was thinking about. Um, her name is uh, Du Bois. What's her name here? I'm trying to find her book. And she called it, I can't remember her name, but her last name is Du Bois. <laughs> and she wrote this book called The Silent Arrival, The Second Wave of the Great Migration, Its Effects on mm -hmm. Black New York. Mm -hmm. And kind of how we are a varied people. We have a lot of interest. And That's right. I mean, the fact that we have to say that is just kind of ridiculous. Um, and, right. you know, it's kind of like, how can we, you know, I think in a way we're almost fighting two battles. We have this idea that uh, I think that some people in the cycling community have a misinterpretation of the black community in regards to like, we don't ride our bikes. And right. some people who are in the black community are like, you're just being influenced by those people. You went away to college and now you're... <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. We've got two battles that we're fighting. So I mean, right. you know, what's your, you know, what, what's your strategy? Well, I mean, I know you have the Cyclists of Color um, um, group, and and so you want yes. to talk a little bit about that? Sure. I'm sorry, my thing is going off like crazy. Um, yeah. So so as a result of me leading these um, monthly bike rides, um, you know, oftentimes it, it, there was this. You know, the ride served as this place of camaraderie. Um, and so people just didn't want to go on a monthly ride. They wanted to ride more and more and more. And so out of that, um, we created a group, um, the Brooklyn Cyclists of Color. Um, and basically, it's just, you know, a group of cyclists from primarily from Bedford-Stuyvesant, but some from um, other neighboring communities that um, if we exchange information about of cycling, you know, um, a lot of the group members are newbies. We have a few riders that, you know, are active long time riders, but for the most part, um, it's new cyclists. Um, and they just want to be in sort of, you know, a community setting with other, you know, cyclists who, you know, are new to this, are still navigating, um, you know, the infrastructure, the roads, you know, routes, um, you know, we had this, you know, questions about what should I wear? And, you know, um, <laughs> uh, I'm scared to ride in the streets with cars. I'd rather do ride in the park. Um, and so we tackle all the sort of questions that people have and all the things that sort of um, keeps them from not riding. Mm -hmm. um, and we sort of just empower each other to kind of, you know, get out there and continue riding and to invite others to do, you know, to do the same. Um, we also tackle the advocacy, advocacy stuff. So, um, you know, we recently started attending trans alt meetings. We recently started attending um, community board three meetings. Um, and so, you know, it's not just about the recreational part. It's also about 
um, the transportation part is also about the health part is also, you know, about, um, you know, participating and, and being engaged and, you know, sharing information with the other, with others. Um, and it's just a place for us to, to do all of those things and do it safely and, you know, fairly and, um, passionately and all those, you know, good things that, um, you know, make this, um, a movement in mm -hmm. a sense. Well, you know, I have to say that it's, you know, I, I'm really happy about all the stuff that I'm hearing from you in regards to the advocacy work, in regards to you getting people out there, in regards to just getting people to participate and just also getting a, a different perspective out that's kind of like, OK, this is, you know, our community is one thing. And the thing is, that our community is so many things. Our neighborhoods are so varied and there's such a variety of people. Yes. So it's so great that we have champions from all, all walks of life. Um, Absolutely. so let's, you know, what, what is a way I, to, I always like to wrap it up to like, how do, how can we support you as, you know, your organization? How can we support, um, you know, the cyclists of color or the other work that you do? What, what how can we support you and your community? Um, just, I guess, you know, um, spreading the word, um, and, you know, just sort of, I think you already supported me. I've seen some of the other um, interviews that you've done and, you know, connected with other people who's doing similar work. I really enjoyed the um, interview and the conversation with the young lady in Newark, New Jersey. I used to live in Newark for 10 years. I'm always talking to people about Newark. Are y'all riding out there? <laughs> um, you know, some other communities are perfect examples and of, of, you know, exactly what we're experiencing here in um, Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I, I visit other um, cities, uh, Atlanta, and I connect with other riders there and share information about, you know, what's happening there, you know, New Orleans as well. I mean, this, it really is a movement. Um, you go around to other cities, people are biking. Like, this is real. This is a viable mode of transportation. It's a way for upward mobility for some OK, um, especially as the, the cost to live in these cities rises, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is a way for people to get to work. I, you know, often reference the story of the young man who was walking. I don't know how many miles I forgot where this was in, in the country, um, but he was walking so many miles to work and they awarded him a car. And I was like a car. And then he has to worry about maintenance and he has to worry about parking. He has to I was like, why don't they give him a bike? You know, I mean, so. <laughs> This is this is real. And I, I just want, you know, others to know that, um, you know, this is an opportunity to change the way um, we think about transportation, you know? No, no, thank you. This, this is a way to change about transportation. So what we're going to do is after we do this, I'll edit it. I'll put all your information so people can get in contact and people can like your next ride and all that stuff. Oh, perfect. Um, and actually, I'm actually going, well, I'm not going to Newark. I'm actually going to East Orange on Wednesday because I'm going to talk okay. to Urban Cyclery. He's like a brother that owns a store in East Orange. It's a really nice store too. So I'm excited. Oh, very about nice. That. So, oh, thank, yes. <laughs> so thank, thank you, everybody, for listening. And thank you, Quayley, for coming on the Black Kids in Outer Space show. See you guys Absolutely. on Wednesday. Bye. You too. Thanks for the invitation. Bye-bye. No problem. Black kids in outer space. Black kids in outer space. Black kids in outer space. Urban planning, walking, bicycling, and more in our space.